Cool. Miriam, did you figure out how to change names? I'll get to it. Thank you. I'm going to do some IT training up in here. <laughs> okay. Eric, why? Okay. All right. So real quick, let's just, the thing is called squeeze it, right? Do you guys know what squeezing is? Like apretar. Apretar, yeah. no? Well, we're going to do it. Yes. So squeezing, right? Like squeezing something. I can't believe I don't have anything to squeeze right now. So squeezing, right? Just squeezing something. What do you guys think I mean by that? If we're doing it in the cold call purposes? Get as much info. Get as much info from what? About what? Just in general, like get as much info? What? Um, what's, the, what's the purpose of getting info? Doing follow-ups. Getting, okay. getting, through, getting through the right person, trying to find out the correct name. Boom. Is anybody else there? Yep. Yep. What kind of info? So let's talk about that. So that's literally what the training is going to be about. I think right now we're having too many cold callers in general. We're having too many like, is the DM in? No. You guys need cleaning? No. Okay. Bye. Right. And we're getting, we're not doing anything past that. Does that make sense? So what I want to do right now, is that Naz or James? Oh, well, that's James. Hello. Um, <laughs> welcome back. Um, so basically what, what I want to break down with you guys right now is what kind of information can we get and what should we always get from every call, right? Because again, you might not get the appointment, even with the decision maker, you might not get the appointment, but you still want to try to get information. So, oh no, James, somehow you're, you're jumping in, made you the host again. Can you allow me to share my screen? Just click on share screen and then allow multiple. Oh, you're too smart. He's way too fast. Okay, there we go. So real quick, we got a cold call. Ignore my writing, ignore my drawing. Let's just, oh, I can't even draw a C. Look at that. So you get the cold call, right? What's the purpose of a cold call? Let's go, let's go. Reaching, Any... reaching out to the DM or to, to. Okay, so reaching the DM. Daisy, what's the point of a cold call? Let's see. By the way, uh, no one's wrong. Just... Having a conversation. Okay, so you're saying a conversation, and then, darling, what do you say? What's the point of a cold call? Get the DM. Get the DM. So get the DM, have a relationship, right? Have a conversation, get info. All those are right. The point of the cold call is simple, right? We, our goal is to go and find sales opportunities. That's it. It's not that complicated, right? Figure out if it's a sales opportunity, right? Now, obviously there's a lot of steps in between that, right? To identify if it's a sales opportunity, but the goal is, is this, is this someone or you, you can put, I'll teach you guys some terminology so you guys can start learning. Sales ops is the easy way to say it. What, what's an SQL? Do you guys know what an SQL is? No. no? Cool, write that down. Sales qualified lead. Right? Sales qualified lead. I'm gonna start teaching you some terminology so you guys know you guys can follow in conversations. A sales qualified lead means this person has this lead has the qualification needed for me to make a sale, right? Super simple. That's how we have the qualifying questions. Right? So that's why when we get here, right, we got we gotta get the qualifying questions. Now before we get here. Right? It's kind of funny because a lot of people will say that the appointment is back here. So we'll try to get the appointment. But in our reality, like the appointment is like over here. Right? How many times have we booked an appointment? Then we ask the qualifying questions and then we realize, shit, this it's is a 500 good. foot clean three times every year. And they only want to pay a hundred dollars, right? Does that make sense? That's not qualified. That's just an appointment. So when I talk about squeeze it, guys, the question is what information can I get so that I can figure out if they are my sales qualified lead? And then most then the second part of this information gathering, this is one information gathering. The second part is what information, let's say you can't go straight through here, right? What other information can I get so that I can slowly, even, I'll go through the back door, right? But I'll get the appointment. 
So there's some that'll tell you straight through, like, yep, I need a cleaner, blah, blah, blah. This is the info, good. There's some that is going to take a little, it's going to be harder to get the appointment, right? So the question here becomes is, let's list out all the information that you would need from the lead. So what kind of information? Every time I call, what information do I want to try to get? There's always information you should gather from the call. Who is the DM or the DM's yeah. name? Yeah. Um, how many, do they already have so a cleaner? Real quick, so DM name. What else on the DM? What do you need? Um, if, if the DM has a different phone number or a different way to contact. Yeah. Phone number. So name, phone number, cell phone, right? They all have Email. a cell phone. <laughs> Everyone has a cell phone. I don't understand what you're, what you're writing there. That's why you got to pay attention. It's an N and a number. I'm not here to do art. So you guys are going to have to figure it out. Decision maker. Mm -hmm. Email. Number. Email. I'm just doing the first letter. Phone number. Email. I asked for their schedule too. Like, are they yeah, regularly are, in the office? Availability. Mm -hmm. Right. What else? Anything else? If the DM has an executive assistant or, or somebody else that helps the DM with the decisions. There you go. So like an assistant, mm -hmm. an EA, executive assistant. Sorry. Cool. And then what information would you need from them? Contact. The same one, right? Well. Yep. Contact number, email, availability, mm -hmm. right? So that's what you have there. What's other information we can ask? Are they currently working with a with a cleaner? Do they do their do they how how many how often do they have the cleaning? Yep. So make sure you write all these things down. Everybody should have these. So you got DM, you got assistant, right? All their info. You got are they working with a cleaner? Right? What else can you ask? What else? Mm. Here's one. If they say they're already working with a cleaner, which cleaner are you guys working with? Are you happy with them? Yeah. I, I would even ask, like, which cleaner? Okay. Before you ask the happy, because most of them will say yes. But some will say no, but so that's why the are you happy uh, is definitely, I would say, like, are you like are you satisfied right now with them? Have you thought about leaving them, right? What else? Obviously, we got the square footage. That one's super important. How often they clean, not super important, right? What else? What else? So, anything, anyone? Somebody give me something. Darling, what else? What else can you get from the, you're on mute, you're on mute. If, if they, they have shop around for a, a different cleaner. Yeah, that's a fair statement. That's a fair statement. Yeah. If they have, uh, if they require an, a specific type of cleaning, like a, other than the regular, just sweeping and mopping, if they need. Sure, uh, like what they need, that's always cool. That's always important, what else? What else? I I think that besides all these questions, I I would say the with the sat are you satisfied with their service? I don't I don't use or I don't feel very much comfortable when we say are you when it comes to the price because the majority of the times they don't they don't they don't feel like giving out that information. So I just would say. Um, how satisfying is the, how, how satisfied are you with them? Okay. And that's just it. Okay. But what else can you ask? Mm. Keep milking it. Keep milking it. Squeeze the most out of it. What else can you find? Are there any specific areas you would like to improve? Maybe. Maybe. Um... What else? 
How long have you worked with them? If they have there one. you go, that could be one. How long have you worked with them? Right? How often do they how often do they like revise or how often do they what's a good one? How long is your to... contract? There you go. That's a good one. If they're in a contract, yeah, how long are you there for? What's another one that we need for sure? So we said square footage. What? We said. What do we need? need? What are we trying to remember? We're trying to get a sales qualified lead and then we're trying to turn it into a sale for them. So what's, what will be super important? Mm, what changes would you make to the current cleaning? That could be one. That's a good question. That's a good question. What's the best way? What's the best way to earn your business? How does one go about making, you know, earning your business? Right, that we definitely want to know how, how we, how, what the best way is to get in the door, right? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So, the point of a the like the squeezing guys is I know for a fact no one's doing that. I think we're all take the way I know that no one's doing that is because we're all putting in our notes. The best way to contact them is via email, really meaning that the gatekeeper says he's not in, send them an email instead. That doesn't mean that the best way to contact them is email, that just means you didn't push enough at all to get the information needed from for you to actually say this is someone I want to pursue at the end of the every call you want to figure out like is this someone that I want to pursue for my client okay because at the end of the day you're trying to bring so there's two two reasons to cold call right there's like we have call the day porter because that's what we're doing now right and then we got our clients right for day porter I mean, for our clients, sorry, we're here to do one thing and that's get appointments. Okay. What else can we bring back our clients outside of appointments that will be beneficial? The follow-up for the proposals, no? No, no, no. What else can you, what other things can you bring them? Yeah, we know this is just from the cold calling. Mm hmm not what result can we bring them, just what information can we bring them? What else can we bring them? Besides the appointment, you said. Yep. Like, imagine you're putting together an email mm -hmm. for Stratus for this week. What information that if he sees there would be beneficial to him as want somebody trying to take over the Vegas market? Oh, so you got me. I need you guys to start opening the way you think. I, I can't think too linear. Um, industries that we can that we can reach out to. Maybe, but you already. So if I go out there and I say, Miriam, go hunt. Miriam, mm -hmm. do your thing. Daisy, go hunt. You can't come back to me and say, man, I need more industries. You can only give me feedback based on what you are, who you already called. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what, what's something we can give them? Let's say we don't book anything for Stratus. Let's say we fucking just, we just couldn't book anything, right? What can we give him that was, that he would still be, damn, this is as valuable as an appointment. Make it easy for you guys. The right answer is data. Now I'll start, well, we can get more niched on this, but I'm going to set you guys up here. Data. What kind of data can we give them back? You guys are calling every day. I mean, I mean, the, the best data that we, we could definitely give is, you know, the squeezing that we have done. Okay. So what from, kind of, from, what kind calls. of from the squeezing, what would be beneficial from them? Because there's a lot of squeezing that they like might not be right now. The contact name, the contact information. No, nope, they now. don't need that. They don't no? need that. No, because you're calling them, not you, I'm not him. Okay, so what would he need? So I'll, set, I'll set you guys up. Competitors would be nice, right? Like, hey, made 500 dials from those that we got the info. These names popped out. Who they are working right? with. Right, like when they say, like, are you currently working with a cleaner? Yes. Uh, Shouldn't stop okay. there. It should be nice. Who, who are you guys working with right now? Do you know? Oh, yeah, we're working with blah, 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 blah. You bring, you do that enough in calls, guys. You're he's gonna, you're gonna be able to go to Steve and say, "Hey, Steve, I don't know who these fucking CDY janitorial peeps are, but they they're popping out in a few accounts. So the question is, how are we different than them? I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call them back. 
and then see if I can get something in. Oh, dude, we totally beat them on price. Done. Hey, we actually studied your account a little bit. I'm pretty sure we can beat them on price, but still keep the same quality. It's a different cold call. Frequency That's of it. cleans. Huh? The frequency, frequency of, of cleans. Frequency of cleans. Yeah, free, frequency. Hey, right? hey, Steve, over 60% of the people we've called in the Vegas area only do three times cleaning a week or whatever. Like, that's good to know. Yep. So I have to ask, Steve, are these good opportunities for you or are we going for the ones like the day porters only? No, these are good, guys. Cool. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Competition, frequency. What else? Provide the benefits from the uh, depending on the campaign that we're actually calling. That's something that it has helped me at, at least to me. That? Like when I go to them, like I'm. This is a janitorial and commercial cleaning company, right? However, uh, we don't do only janitorial. Like in this case, Mayflower. But has that's that's to your in. prospect. That's to your mm -hmm. prospect. Um, this is for the. This is for like the client. And, yeah, this is for your your particular client. And to answer your question, be, we just be careful on dropping all of that. That's for the client to do, like for our client to do once he's in the door. All we're trying to do is get him in the door. Okay. That makes sense? Because if you go and pitch like something that has nothing to do with this, it's going to get pretty, like we might just put him in a weird position. Does that make sense? Yeah. So competitor is good. The frequency is good. Daisy, what other data would you give them? You're on mute. We are, what, what, what we have already, the competitors, frequency. Um, I don't know if price, it's good data to give them. Like if no. they are more motivating, if they are more motivated for price. That's for an, that's for an appointment. What other information can we give them? Mm. I feel like we're missing like one right here. It, which is which is like right hand to hand with competition and frequency. Yeah, so we know the competition. We know who's cleaning theirs. That's that's useful. We know, hey man, we're running into three times a week clean or three times a month type of type of cleaning projects what do you what else do you think if you sent to steve would be super beneficial so i mean one super simple one is like what are people saying about commercial cleaner like what are people out there saying it's a super super broad one but if you guys are running into like Pretty much this is like what you would consider like um what's the right word like we have to help them understand their prospect more right so what that means is like whatever you guys run into data wise over there like man we have the same cleaner for 10 years oh man you know we're not really looking for a cleaner oh every cleaner that we talk to blah 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 like any data that you can get them like comments that you see commonly being said by your prospects, that's super helpful for them, right? Why? Because then they get to create any messaging, they get to any marketing campaign, any way they approach it. They're like, hey, I know you're probably thinking that blah, 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 because we gave them all that data. Does that make sense? Like we're able to see it from, their pro like from the prospect perspective. So the point of a cold call isn't just to book appointments. The appointment is obviously amazing. But the point of a cold call is to feed our clients, like our clients, the competitor data, the frequency data, so they're prepared, right? Pros like prospect information that they're getting, right? This could be like, hey, you can come over for, like, uh, you can come by in, but I'm not gonna book anything via email. Something like that, be like, hey man, these type of businesses, we've noticed they actually want you to walk in versus us booking something. Here are the list of five businesses that say, hey, man, if you want something, we'd rather book, uh, walk in. Uh, let, let us know how it goes. That I don't know why we don't do that enough. Right? It, it, and it has come up, though. Like, I know it has. No, I know for a fact it has. It has come up. But I honestly, maybe because it, we're 
we're just with the appointment setting in our mind. Yeah. We don't go after these other type of data that could definitely give us, you know, a, a huge yeah. impact in what we're doing. And even, and guys, and we need it for day Porter. Like all this data, we need more. We need like, are people like buying over the phone? Are, are, are dealership, how do dealerships like to buy? What are you guys finding here? Right. Do you get, do you like people like to be communicated via email or cold call? Right. Like, we need you guys to find as much information as you can. Okay. This isn't just here. So the question, for example, would be, <laughs> you guys know what a pigeon is, right? Yeah. Aloma, I think I told you guys that before already, right? Like what happens to pigeons usually? How do pigeons eat? Where do they go? Where do they look for their food? Pigeons. Paloma, Seeds. How to... Huh? Seeds. Samia. Yeah, they well, honestly fucking pigeons eat whatever the fuck is on the like whatever they can find. Right? They don't they don't just look for seeds. You throw a burger, motherfucker's gonna get that burger. But how do they eat? Do they like stand on a roof or like on a table and go like, interesting? I have multiple options here. No, they just they just go for whatever right? they, they just find. Like, they just like, boom. Yeah, they just look down. They're looking at their feet. They could literally be a burger right on top of them, but they're so focused on the little like crumbs and all the little things on the floor that they just that's why when people say don't pigeonhole is because like literally like now that's how does doing. it how does an eagle hunt have you guys ever seen a first of all now i want to go look at an eagle document they're majestic <laughs> like they are majestic they are how does, how does an eagle hunt have you guys ever actually go and looked up how an eagle hunts i can tell you by a movie i saw with my kids there you go. About pets. <laughs> hey, how, so, so how do they do it? They're just like on top and they're like, they have a huge view over everything. Mm -hmm. And that's just it. I mean, they're, they're not just, they're not focused on one little specific place. They have their view like on top of everything. Exactly. So the question is when you guys are cold calling, are you cold calling like a pigeon or are you cold calling like an eagle? Like, are you only looking at it like, oh, I need an appointment. Huh? And then that's it. I didn't get anything back. Or are you saying, okay is a dealership interesting the gm's not here but the office manager and the sales manager is here i wonder if i can ask the sales manager like how clean the floor is or like has it ever affected his cleaning because if it is then i can call the gm tomorrow tell him i spoke to bob the sales manager and he said that the floor is actually not as clean as he would like to so it could affect the sales interesting let me go hunt and then the eagle takes off All right the point is don't think too linear. Two things. We have day porter, day porter. We have to have more information and more insight in this industry than anybody. And it starts with you guys. So when I, when I grab you guys and say, all right, let's go hunt everybody. I expect some, for you guys to bring something back every single day. And it's not just an appointment. Like yesterday, we didn't get an appointment. And what, what did we pay for yesterday? You have to tell me, hey, Andrew, I didn't get an appointment, but you know what? I was dialing for Mayflower, and I'm running into this, which is interesting because we're seeing a dip in appointments, but this is what's going on over there, and we're calling these type of leads, right? Like, if it's not an appointment, we need data. We need data. We need data. And the more data that we get, the more knowledgeable you guys get, right? Like, you guys should know how to book appointments right now for any industry in the commercial cleaner just because of you've been calling that every single day. So if you still feel like you don't, then you're just calling to call, right? Versus calling to actually build sales opportunities. So that's all I got for you guys. The point is today, go for the appointment. If the appointment or the DM's not there, I need you to bring something back. We cannot just not bring anything back. So at the end of the day, in the, do we have a day porter channel? Um, maybe not. Maybe I think we well, do. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Uh, Let's put it on the yeah the day porter channel. Let's add them, James. Yeah, so that's yeah. cool with you. And then every day on the day porter channel, guys, I need you to bring me back data. I need you to tell me what you learned. Okay. And if you can't think of anything, then we'll talk afterwards. But let's let's make sure we're we're there for it. That's all I got.
All right, guys. Stop. I got a. We.